Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam shows us how to partition using Windows 7 built-in software. Ooh, this sounds dangerous. No, seriously, you should back up all data before attempting this. All right, as you can see, I am booted right into Windows 7, eager to get started today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to partition using Windows 7. Uh, this will also work for Windows Vista, pretty much same steps, and I apologize if you are stuck with that operating system. This, however, will not work for Windows XP. Windows XP requires you to use a partition type, uh, basically a live CD in order to do and manipulate your partitions. So if you are running Windows XP, you will have no choice but to use the, um, the Linux uh, way of partitioning. All right, so you will need administrative privileges before you do this. The other thing I should warn you about is you should back up all data. Uh, I have had very good luck partitioning, but there is always a risk that your partition tables could get messed up, data could get corrupted. Whatever the reason, there is always that risk. So uh, I recommend backing up everything that you want backed up before doing any kind of partitioning. So you've been warned, back up. So I'm not sure if this is really needed, but I'll recommend doing it anyway because it won't hurt. Uh, a lot of people feel that you should run a disk defragmenter before you do any partitioning in Windows 7, or Vista for that matter. So uh, just click Start, Disk Defragmenter, and then I'm going to do this on the C drive. You can see where I have two partitions. Um, most people will just have the C drive, so this is probably the drive that you are going to want to take space away from to create another partition. So just defragment disk and let that run through. Okay, and once that's done, we're going to go to start again, and we are actually going to start partitioning. So you can just type in hard drive, and the create and format hard disk partition application should come up. Again, you're going to need system administration uh, in order to do this. And then here you can see uh, this big mess, all of my partitions. Yours will probably not look quite this complicated, but uh, we'll go through it so that way you understand what's going on. All right, here you can see my setup. You'll probably have disk zero. Um, I actually have two disks, uh, two physical hard drives, that is. So that's why I have disk zero, disk one. Here's your CD-ROMs. So here you can see the C drive. You'll probably have just the C drive. You may have another partition that you didn't know about. That would be your hidden partition, uh, especially like if you have like, like a, a laptop or if your desktop or whatever did not come with a Windows CD. Even if it did come with a CD, uh, the manufacturer may have put a special uh, partition there. Uh, if you do see that partition, don't touch that. You really don't want to mess that up because that has your clean snapshot of the Windows operating system. And so looking at my system, you can see we have on my, one of my hard drives, I have my C drive. Uh, which has the Windows operating system. This has the Linux operating system. You can't tell that. And then this is the swap partition, which is, we'll go into that uh, in, when we're doing the full-blown install of what that is all about. And then on disk, my other hard drive disk, this is an ext4 uh, file system uh, that has all of my data uh, in on the Linux side. And then I have a, a smaller uh, 45, about a 45 gigabyte um, uh, partition that's NTFS, and this is where all of my videos and stuff reside, so I can edit uh, my videos uh, using the Windows operating system. So at this point you should have an excellent idea of how you want your system to be mapped out with partitions. So here's a couple scenarios just for you to think about. Uh, if you want, you can keep all of your data in your C drive like you normally do. So for example, uh, uh, for most people, once you go to your C drive and then you go to users, for my case it's under Atom, this is where a lot of my, by default, this is where a lot of your Windows uh, data files uh, are kept. So like my documents, your music, whatever. This is on an NTFS partition. So if you wanted, we could create just a partition from here that would be just for the Linux operating system. And in that particular case, you would just have your C drive. Uh, we'll shrink that down a little bit, and then we will create a, another partition for the Linux operating system. The partition that we would probably use for the Linux operating system, I would recommend at least 10 gigabytes. Uh, you'll probably be safe with 15 gigabytes. You just can't store a lot of data on that partition. It would only be for the Linux operating system. So option two is creating 
basically uh, three partitions, or a total of three partitions. So what we would do is we'd have our C drive, we would shrink that down uh, enough to create a separate partition for where our Linux operating system will, will go. Uh, that may be only 10 to 15 gigabytes in size. That should be plenty if you're doing that with just for the Linux operating system. And then whatever you have left over, uh, you could uh, turn into a data partition. So this could be formatted eventually as an NTFS file system. Uh, you should know the pros and cons to that. Or an ext4 file system. So here's the deal. I can only shrink down to how much free space I actually have on that hard drive. So. Uh, for example, on my C drive, if I want to start uh, creating some space for my other partition, I can just click on the C drive, right click, and say shrink volume, and then it'll query the C drive for me. Okay, and you can see I can shrink this down approximately 80,000 megabytes, or what would be close to 80 gigs. So if I only wanted to create a uh, approximately a 15 gig uh, partition for the Linux operating system, this would be very, very easy to do. So let's say I wanted to create two partitions from this. I wanted to create my 15 gig Linux operating system partition, and I also wanted to create a separate data partition. Well, it'll be helpful to know how much data you have. For example, I have over 100 gigs worth of data. So uh, whatever I shrink out of this, I am not going to have enough room for my data. If this is the case for you, and you really want eventually three partitions, right? Uh, the Windows operating system, a data partition, and a Linux partition, What's going to have to happen is you're going to uh, have to move your data around temporarily in order to achieve this. So for example, if you really want to separate out your data partition from your C drive, and you already have lots of data on your C drive, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to your computer, and you're actually going to have to take and extract and move your data to another uh, hard drive. So in order to do this, uh, most people store their, their, their stuff, at least for Windows 7, under their username, which in my case is Adam. And here you've got my documents, my music. This is usually where the default uh, data is stored. So what you would do is you would just take this entire folder and you would copy it over to an external hard drive. Then once you feel that everything is copied over properly, you would actually delete this entire folder. Um, and then once you did that, you could defrag this, and then you should have a lot more capacity and freed up a ton of space on the C drive. And then that way, when you right-click to, say, shrink volume, you should be able to shrink it much, much, much more. Let's say, for example, you're going to create an NTFS data partition to store all of your data in between the two operating systems. Uh, as soon as you create that in here, I would immediately move that data back over. That way, you have at least two copies of the data. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can always just uh, access your data uh, on the Linux side uh, in the C drive. But again, you don't get some of the nice benefits uh, of having your data separated uh, out of the two operating systems. OK, so uh, now let's make some partitions. So what you will do is you will right click. You will have to shrink. OK, when you get to this stage, uh, you are going to say how much you want to shrink by. Now, I'm not going to continue on because I do not want to mess up my partitions because I have everything exactly the way I want. But uh, basically what would happen is you would say shrink, and then an, hopefully an unallocated spot would show up over here uh, along this table. And then you could right-click that, and then you could format that as a NTFS. Uh, you can't do it as XT, uh, ext4, just because, again, Windows does not support ext4. Um, and then when you format it as NTFS, uh, you can label it whatever you want, but um, it should pop up. Uh, here as a separate hard drive. So you could label it like a Z drive, whatever you wanted. You could change the letter. Uh, that's real easy to do. You can just uh, right click, change drive letter and paths. Um, if you are going to go with an ext4, let's say the partition you're creating is for your Linux operating system or you want to store your data in ext4, uh, my recommendation is format it as FAT32, and the only reason you're not going to keep it that way, but um, it'll be real easy to detect when we go to install the operating system. Uh, what will happen is if everything is labeled NTFS, um, you'll be have to have to rely on the numbers uh, in, in size to know which one to actually install the operating system on. But if you have one that's FAT32, it's real easy to detect and be like, oh, that's the partition I want to put my operating system on, or I want to format 
that as my data. So that's it. That's pretty much how you uh, partition using the Windows uh, software in order to achieve that. Uh, next week, we are going to do the partitioning uh, in Linux. Um, so if you feel more comfortable or you have Windows XP, uh, this is the way that you can set up your partitions beforehand and finally uh, after that we will actually do the full-blown install you should have enough uh, information to make uh, good decisions of how you want your system to be set up and uh, we'll go through the actual uh, installation as always thanks for watching and be sure to check out my website greenhornlinux.com